Cool. What's up, Johnny? There we go. So we got Johnny Pace from Pace Photo here. This is super exciting for me because Johnny went to the same elementary school as me, middle school as me, high school as me, and we went to actually opposing uh, universities here in Virginia. So so happy to have you. Dude, it's great to be here. Yeah, man, this is exciting. Dude, you also live in the same neighborhood as me. He's actually like my neighbor. So. <laughs> Three minute drive. Man. <laughs> I know we've been to all corners of the globe, but yeah. when, we're, when we're here in Virginia, it's super close. Super close. So Johnny, Pace Photo, it like blew up here, man. Yeah. You become a photographer. You, you were man. just you were just in Europe, right? I did 50 days in Europe, just got back this week. That's awesome, man. You were uh, photographing for a magazine, right? Um, yeah, well, it's, it's called Sidious Mag. It's not actually a print magazine, but oh, yeah. um, big uh, leading American track and field media network. Um, they cover the whole sport. And yeah, they sent me on assignment to at least 10 different countries. Okay. Um, a lot of the big meetings in track and field take place in Europe. And typically they, they haven't had a presence there. It's mostly Europeans cover it. So they wanted to be kind of the first American media to oh, cool. be on the scene and be boots on the ground. So they, they asked me to go out. Man, it was unbelievable. That's exciting, man. I know it's uh, Switzerland and Sweden, at least, right? At least. And then um, also hit London, Paris, Oslo, Vienna, nice. Florence, Rome. I think that was it for the Dude, that's amazing. Yeah, man. That's exciting. And it must hit a special nerve for you because you ran in college. You're yeah track athlete right i was yeah, it was a four-year athlete at virginia yep um and i just wasn't ready to let that go i mean i've always <laughs> yeah i don't know i mean i've been running our neighborhood turkey trot since i was five right. uh, five years old and i've never stopped and it's just part of who i am and i didn't feel really, like there was no way i was going to let that go once i left college and i had knew that i still had a lot more athletically i wanted to do but injury kind of made it tough to to train at that level and so it kind of fell into my lap because i wasn't i always had an interest in cameras and, and good photography but like i uh, didn't do it and so it was just this kind of chain of events that i've now worked my way uh kind of in, into the media side of, of the sport so. sweet yeah so you it kind of fell into your lap into your life you, i know you joined corporate life i did yeah right? you're doing consulting just like like i did in, like based in dc mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's right that's awesome yeah. so did you buy your canon camera with your corporate salary or did you get it when you were in college so no no it was definitely uh it was one of my er early uh purchases when i started getting a paycheck <laughs> yeah, okay. it was nice to be able to walk into the store and say yeah actually, actually I, I can afford this i can yeah. I, I can actually get something nice and yeah, i haven't looked back so Nice. Did you get Did you get it from the Best Buy? No, where did I get it? No, there's Northern Virginia has like a, a couple like professional camera stores. They're not they're okay. far and few between, um, but a little higher end like Best Buy. You can kind of get the entry level of the high end stuff. Yeah, that was what I didn't want to like start out cheap. I wanted to get the right equipment to do the job. Yeah, um, so I made a bit of. It was a lot of money. Obviously, cameras are, and I think that's what can be. Yeah, can stop some people from starting in it, but. I kind of had some proof of concepts from borrowing some friends' cameras. I was like, I have the the eye for it. Yeah. I'm not going to let the equipment be the limiting factor. Of course, there, so. dude. Those who pay the most pay the most attention. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's a great camera, the R6, dude. Yeah. Fantastic. So Pace Photo mm -hmm. is your main medium of photography because I know you also have videography in your portfolio. Yeah. As well. So Pace Photo just rolls off the tongue. He's got that alliteration, yeah. but I'm very much photo and video. And I'd say I'm actually, a lot of my success has stemmed from the video work that I've done. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my friends and people, friends of friends in the network of the sport industry, as you know, everybody is a brand these days yeah. and how you market yourself and, and present what you're doing is almost just as important as your performances. And I was fortunate that friends of friends and people that I would meet kind of through our travels had big YouTube presences, for example, or big yeah. Instagram followings. And everybody needs good content, but they don't necessarily know how to capture that. And my first big break, I suppose, or proof of concept was a friend who already was very established in YouTube and maybe 50,000 or more YouTube subscribers. And he let me use his camera and it was, I was in Boulder with him and right. I was injured and super interested in using the camera. So we shot that first time. This was now coming up on three years ago and the videos popped off, off the bat. We were doing like huge, uh, for me, it was like, you know, if we were hitting a hundred thousand views on something and it's one of my first projects, I'm like, dude, wow, like, <laughs> yeah. this is exciting. 
So, so that early momentum, some people I know have to post for years and years, but I was able to um, work with a friend of mine and, and kind of get that positive to uh, feedback and audience. Nice. Early on. Yeah. You, confidence. Yeah. Dude, that's, that's the way uh, mentorship. I know me personally and on, on other people, they, I don't know if it's an ego thing, but they kind of hesitant to reach out to people who've already found success. Mm. And like, oh, I have to like get product first, or I have to do this first. Yeah. But uh, yeah, success leaves clues, and if you have the humility to tap into people who've already figured it out, yeah, I I found personally they're more than happy to help you out. Definitely. Like, ran out of camera or whatever they need. Yeah, man. I, I think there's two parts to that. Like uh, people who are successful have to start somewhere. Yeah. It doesn't happen overnight. And I've as I, I look at peers and and mentors in my realm of interest of the photo and video material it's a very similar story a lot of times that they they started out with a corporate job and but it took years to reach a escape velocity that they could go full time with what they were doing because how how could you do it any other way like um go from zero to 100 without putting in the time and yeah um, maybe fostering the relationships and experience needed for that and i'll also say though like it is important too to not like to continue to to look inward because oftentimes if you reach out to a very high end individual, yeah. um, you might not be like necessarily ready at that point in time, mm-hmm. but maybe you can learn from them. But like it's I think it's important to continue to be curious about how to improve and and keep bettering your craft, yeah. um, so that maybe the next time down the road that you run into that person, you are ready and yeah. you rise to the occasion there. That's a very good point too. Yeah, absolutely. Because as a mentor, because you might find yourself in like a mentorship role. And in either case, what you do want to see is people taking action on what you told them. Yeah. So yeah, I have a mentor in like what I do in my business mm-hmm. and every single time it's like, all right, you already take action on what I said earlier. And yeah, so it does require you to look inward to make sure you're doing the things that you need to do after the call offline. Right. But uh, yeah, dude. So I wanted to ask you, you said your first time you had uh, the co- the camera and camera experience was with your friend. Yeah. Do you remember your first projects? Like, very what, what was your first collab too? That's yeah. It. Um. So it was in a very, uh, it was a, oh my gosh, I still reflect on this summer. It's just it's a perfect storm of incredible yeah. memories and experiences. I just, I treasure it. So it was three years ago, it was COVID. Yeah. Um, everybody was quarantined and uh, i knew that my job was going to be fully remote and Mm -hmm. i reached out to my buddies and that summer we went to boulder um kind of as a send-off before we all went our separate ways with our careers and uh, after school and it also so happened a lot of college teams will train uh, at altitude in the summertime right so a lot of the the very best um collegiate programs the, the top of the top and everywhere in between we're all out there and all the professionals are out there so it's kind of this melting pot of people and uh, go-getters go-getters yeah and so there's just day after day there was always something really exciting that we were working on because uh whether it was you know a run in the rocky mountains which to me i love capturing the nature mm-hmm. kind of superimposed on athletics i think when you put those together that's a really cool combo yeah. or we would do one of my like one of our very first projects there's a fellow with more like 250,000 subscribers who's very big in the ultra running um space yeah and i remember our first like big video was when he came out to the track when I mean, this man's running uh, 100 mile races he's not a a miler right um, and he he and my friend who is a miler did kind of sprints together and the, we did a breakdown video of how those two types of runners move okay. um and it blew up and yeah um that was a really cool first one and yeah but i felt like every every video we were putting out had something cool about it and or we would get um all of the nation's top distance runners in one spot out, out for a run and so kind of creating these really unreal sort of productions that sound people, mr beastie like yeah kind of setting it up yeah, yeah man just a little bit of planning goes a long way like if you can get a an idea of like oh this would be cool like the, the thing i always love to think about is like scratching your own itch what's the sort of stuff and sort of content and sort of pictures videos ideas that i myself would immediately click on if i saw that um yeah. stuff that is exciting and, and new i think that's a big thing is how do you 
stay fresh and not just keep reinventing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And I always try to use that to guide projects I'm working on is, you know, what can, what elements can we introduce that yeah. keep it exciting personally and by extension for people who are seeing it. See, that's why it's so important what you said earlier. It's like, everyone's somewhat of the niche of themselves but like the niche you're talking about now what's what's really cool is that you yourself mm. are the consumer you right. are a runner you are the athlete you know what would be clickable content sure and you know what is missing let's say like yeah a miler i'm not even sure what a miler is versus like someone else like what kind of content mm -hmm. the, like the difference sure that is language you're using because you're so into it right that it's literally if if the person who's seeing that, reading that, like, oh my gosh, this is written, this is made just for me. Yeah. It's super clickable, engaging. Yeah. Yeah. You have to imagine that if, if, if there's something as, even as specific as, a, as the running world or something, that there's a, if you're making it for the audience of one, more likely than not, there's going to be other people out there that would enjoy that as well. Gotcha. Gotcha. So the podcast, like at first I had like long form interviews and I'd love to like, at the end, I'll keep like the more like personal stuff. Um, I'm very curious about like what you've been up to, yeah. but uh, the podcast, I always shifted it more into like the business side. Mm -hmm. And so pacephoto.org, I saw you have the portfolio Yeah. and um, I'm going to get more creators out there for people who aren't, who don't know in my recent past life, I've worked with influencers very closely um and one of the things that we had to do to get our first collaborations was build out a media kit which is somewhat mm -hmm. like a digital creator's resume where yeah. you create all you put all your portfolio in your work and your subscriber count engagement mm -hmm. rate all these numbers yeah um did you create a media kit as well um that sounds like a really cool thing and i think that'd be an awesome uh, addition to kind of what i've done this year has been very focused on yeah how do we make this um how do we make the make this something that we can bring to a company or make it easier for them to to get collaborate with me mm -hmm. and take me on as a, as a you know somebody who's working with them yeah and so for me that has looked like um you know i do a lot through instagram and i feel like anything i'm putting out there i would be proud to say that's part of my portfolio that any i could just send somebody my account and they could look through and know what i'm about okay. and it's all going to be high quality and then i took that a step further I'm, spent some time building out a website which i think in this day and age uh there's a layup and something that you should oh, definitely yeah. have if you don't already um but i think what you're saying about a media kit people don't always have the time to, to mm -hmm. go to your instagram page or to navigate to a website but if you can have something that's concise yeah and they can get you a uh get a sense very quickly yeah i think that's great so you've given me oh, something sweet, to yeah. take home and uh put together sweet man yeah uh we used Canva back in the old days, and as you get a new collab, you just like have a section for like collabs mm -hmm. or worked with. Yeah, hyperlink that to the website, whatever, or to the actual posts and mm -hmm. reels that you created. Yeah, it's all in there. So yeah, your media kit, if you want to create one, it's already. I think Canva has a temp. They have templates of media kits already. Okay. But uh, yeah, I mean that's be super cool. Cityus Magazine and yeah. all the competitions. Yeah. I wrote it down. It was what was it the. You just came back from the Luzanne Diamond League. Yeah, yeah, in Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah, man, that's exciting. I mean, all that can be populated there. But I'm curious. So you didn't have, you don't have a media kit yet. So you're saying you would just do DM, like Instagram DM outreach to these people, or how did you connect with Sidious, for instance? So that's a good question. So it looks, I think, in in my area, it has been fueled first and foremost by my network and. Okay. That was always so ambiguous to me. I remember in college they would stress the network effect. Oh yeah. And I don't know. I didn't wasn't quite sure if that if I believed it or not. And I continued to see that kind of building relationships with people and oftentimes not necessarily in a business sense, first off, leads to can lead to things down the road when you can come together. I'll give you an example. I'm flying to Oregon tomorrow for the US championships. Let's it, go. Where the team USA is going to be decided for the world championships later this summer. And my main client is going to be uh, Brooks, Brooks Running. Yep. And how that came to be, it certainly didn't just happen because um, there's a lot of people in the photo space. There's a lot of uh, very gifted photographers and videographers. Right. Um, and it can be competitive at times. The way this came about was three years ago, my friend who I told you about, who I filmed his YouTube videos, yeah. joined the Brooks professional team. And I went out as a friend as he did, tra they did training camp in Albuquerque. And I just bought my camera and I shot for free um, for this professional Brooks team. 
they didn't have anybody doing that sort of thing and nice dude but i and i got paid a little bit of money but not a meaningful amount and it was more as the gesture of goodwill yeah. nothing came of that for a year for two years now one of those athletes is in charge of um, brooks market global marketing and i th i'd like to think that we have a friendship first and foremost yeah. and we would run into each other across the years and then because you are friends you, he's aware more of the work i've been doing and he likes what i'm, what I'm doing and now this awesome you know relationship that's coming i'm going to be uh, helping them you know cover the team, okay. team championship so um and i feel like that has kind of been a theme and it's it's really based in in meeting people and expressing your authentic self to them and yeah. making sure that they know that you're not out for anything other than uplifting and, yeah. and being a real person um and i think that is that's how i hope i'll continue to operate um i will add though because i have seen as well that a lot of times people don't know if, if you don't ask and so i haven't had to reach out so much to complete strangers at this point um because i've stayed busy with people in the closer circle but yeah. um for more of the stretch opportunities um maybe yes yeah, sending a cold uh, a cold email or a cold dm usually i think yeah. instagram is is my preferred way and again but then they have my portfolio they can immediately i mean within half a second see if it's something that meets what they're looking for yeah um and so that that has also been tremendous John, right. johnny that's awesome <laughs> thank that's you. exciting yeah, so thank you're gonna you. be at the world championships tomorrow that's awesome u.s All championships right. this week worlds will be in budapest in august oh, and i'll be on there as well so. oh that's good yeah, yeah. dude so you did something that in like the business like entrepreneur i i don't i don't know why i don't like the word entrepreneur but sure. like that space uh, they talk about this what you just did naturally it's called digging your well like mm -hmm. well before you need it yeah you just did mm -hmm. the gesture of goodwill because that gains you access to the space and gains you goodwill like you just said yeah and really business is like a spiritual game like you want to be able to work with these people right like even if you have two same resume same people but like one of them is willing to work for free for you yeah. that shows you something that that is like beyond the papers. Like this person can give you extra hours, going to go the extra mile. Yeah. And they have a tremendous degree of uh, personal integrity to do that. They trust in the work so much. Like you more than willing, if you become a person of a decision maker, like your friend did, and they can give you access later on, they can. Yeah. So that's awesome. You did that, man. And I will, I will that. add a, 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 another layer to that though. I feel fortunate that in building out this photo and video work, I I didn't have to stress about money being the primary driver, mm. um, which can change things, right? If, if you're leading with, I need to be able to pay my bills fair, off this fair. work. I think you come from a different place. Again, I'm so, uh, my work, my, my day job mm. gave me that comfort that the photo and video was in labor of love. It was never about how much can I get money off of this? Yeah. And I think that has led to better work because everything I'm doing, it's, and I'm not working for free because I want to in hope that someday they will, uh, will pay me. It's, I want to create this. I'm excited about shooting these people in this awesome place. Nice. I want to make art or something that is exciting to me, share that with them that they can share with their people. And that has kind of been my guiding force in this area which has been so freeing because i am leading there with uh the, th the opportunities and the experiences that are most interesting to me and creatively stimulating um that i think leads to better work and, and ultimately yeah. better relationships absolutely man I, I always tell people tap into your creator self like you can i mean you're definitely interested in something right like we all have like dopamine reward systems there is something that kicks your dopamine yeah. figure out what that is and just create more of that stuff because there's only like 16 personality types you know my team my brother he's like in the med medical space yeah and he told me about the myers briggs and mm -hmm. all this stuff he's like there's about 16 people you're going to come across like in, in general mm -hmm. right there are a lot of people just like you so yeah figure out what your interests are and you're going to find even more niche now oh, versions definitely. of that so like you can create a lot for a lot of people and i think uh it's such a fulfilling feeling to create something and yeah if you get paid 
cool if you don't cool but i think the whole reward in and of itself is creating yeah for instance this podcast dude i have not made one dollar off this podcast this mm -hmm. this whole like brand plus ultra is not even registered my main business is a b2b business like mm -hmm. i help business owners with like uh automations build out integrations yeah that is what i get paid to do and this i think i told you before the call like this just manifested after talking to clients and talking mm -hmm. to really cool people i met i'm like yeah. you know what people could benefit from this conversation so let me just record it yeah and post it somewhere it might it might end up being something else i'm actually building a course right now on the side it's gonna it's under this uh plus ultra name mm -hmm. uh, but that wouldn't have happened if i didn't just like do it for free right and because i was like i'm actually having so much fun creating this podcast yeah, man. talking about this stuff might as well like benefit more people and yeah i just got my like 30 second review on this podcast like on apple I'm like okay there's at least 32 people who are so excited to hear this they're willing to comment i'm like all right so this is doing good for the people but yeah i wasn't expecting anything from that but that all happened from just putting on my creator hat yeah and just saying you know what i'm just gonna put something in, out into the world whatever right <laughs> well and that's the thing like uh likes for me or v listens mm -hmm. or downloads yeah. those are kind of things beyond your control yeah um and they're almost irrelevant because if you are creating something in service to your own interests and yeah. in service of your curiosities you've already won you've already succeeded yeah uh, by having done it yeah it's a byproduct the likes the followers like it's all just a, it just happens yeah and even if it doesn't like materialize like there are no like happier people than creators like even if you have like 20 followers mm -hmm. like you made something yeah. and it's so fulfilling like yeah keep making as much as you can and like you got to imagine everybody has something right that they, yeah that gets them fired up um i'll just add to that like if you do decide to create to just be consistent with it maybe it's not yeah. always going to be a home run it's not going to be a masterpiece but yeah. that act because uh, you start to integrate that into what you do and um it's i think momentum builds with consistency as well yeah dude. and yeah consistency is huge sometimes you do need to like update or like do some versioning let the market like somewhat steer you yeah uh my instagram my instagram at first it was like super focused on like calisthenics like, mm -hmm. when i was in um in quarantine i was like all right well i'm gonna get everyone in shape fuck it yeah. and i was still working my corporate job at the time just like you and i didn't want my uh, teammates to know who i was so i used like a pseudonym oh and like yeah. you know how they say your arm span is like your height yeah like i would be six four like my arms are really long nice. and i'm only five ten so I was like, all right, I'm kind of built like an orangutan. Uh -huh. So my little like alias was Gutan, like orangutan. Yeah. Like, that didn't hit. Like no, no one was no calling it. It was just so silly, but I was like the happiest guy for like those two years. I'm just creating, like, fuck it, I'm just doing whatever. But uh then I realized like, all right, I kind of do want to monetize this. What can I do? And I would just listen to the market a bit. And I'm like, all right, what am I good at? But what am I still having fun creating? And it's business. Like I like creating things with people. Mm -hmm. with people so yeah that's how it just evolved yeah man. but yeah it's still now that i put on this new new filter consistency ties in again i need to be consistent post this this podcast every wednesday no matter what happens that week i need to post on wednesday so yeah yeah just build some kind of consistency amen so your brand pace photo you're doing international events this is super exciting i imagine you picked up the camera just three years ago and you're already yeah. going to the world championship that's amazing yeah man uh what is the direction you you see pace mm -hmm. photo going yeah. do you want to build out a team or mm, that's a good question yeah. um you know it's funny i i wrote you know how sometimes you talk about uh writing out your goals before they happen so you know what you're working towards yeah i did that exercise last year and where i thought about this question i said in the best case if i could have anything i wanted with this endeavor what would it be and i wrote down a few things and i'll tell you what they were is i want to travel to europe i want to get paid to do so I want to cover the top end of athletic events. Check, check, check. So, so now I need to sit down and dream bigger yeah. and think about where do I want to take this? It has taken such an exciting course. Um, and I wouldn't say overnight. It's been just continuing to live and work every day at this yeah. um, and have fun with it. But yeah, now i got to figure out, is this a feasible career path? Is this... Um, what sort of clients would I want to work with? Yeah. I've already, you know, this past weekend I was shooting with an Olympic gold medalist one on one and an Olympic bronze medalist one on one, in addition to the covering the meet. And yeah, nice. to those guys are a, 
like think we know each other at this point in the relationship. So things are, are great. And I'm actually so content with that. Um, yeah. So I don't, it's not to say, but it, you, life goes on. So you have to keep thinking. So yeah. I'd say in the next year, I really want to make it to the Olympics, which will be in Paris next summer. Yeah, I think that's a, a pretty reasonable goal given, yeah. uh, and a big goal nonetheless, though, given kind of where I, the portfolio I've been able to build. And yeah, I, I think building out a team of some sort, I, I have a couple big ideas. I think there's a lot of stories that are ready to be told, especially going to the Olympics all over the world. A lot of interesting storylines ready to be covered. And I, I really want to pursue that. Um, and to this point, I've gotten by with a team of one yeah. or a team of two, maybe, um, but still kind of run and gun and shoot from the hip yeah. um, and maybe put a little more structure into it and just see how good can we make this and that often comes with bringing a team on and so i am i do want to learn more about how can we and then that costs money of course yeah. right um and so how can we bring in the right partners to, that want to tell high quality stories and maybe we can start to to bring people in and so yeah i'd love to see pace photo grow i mean i talk about i have a lot of my closest friends are big time creators yeah. i do more of the behind the scenes but um they bring in that skill set of what does it take to, to build a personal brand yeah there's a lot of avenues I'm curious about. So maybe it's it's building something with them or, or building up my end of the production stuff. Um, I'd like to integrate, yeah, more of my business education with a master's in international business. Yeah. Three years as a management consultant. Yeah. Uh, those skills, uh, they apply, but if I can integrate all that, yeah. um, that'd be really cool. So oh, I'm still exploring. I don't have a, a concrete answer, yeah. but... Um, just continuing looking upward and yeah, man, continue to improve. Doing great, um, and I'm glad that you're letting gratitude catch up with it, like with yeah. your success, and you just sit there and grateful yeah. and let it catch up, let the success catch up to you. That's awesome to see. Yeah. That's Thank awesome. You. I um, I will say some photographers like it's just good to like rack up offers. Like um, uh -huh. it, it makes you as a creator, as a businessman, whatever it is, uh, tap into what the market wants from you. Yep. And I know like just from like past experience, one of our first offers we ever made was uh presets. We were like, mm -hmm. we're constantly putting the same edits on these pictures. Yeah. Like I don't know what's I almost bought them. I'll almost bought them, I'll be honest. Yeah. I remember going to your website. Yes. They're oh, good. Yeah, they, oh, dude, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm curious what your toolbox is, like software wise. And okay. then maybe we can like brainstorm just really quickly here for like the other business photographers, people who have their um photography businesses yeah yeah that's like one of the lowest hanging fruit for like uh on or for digital creators was the uh lightroom mm -hmm. lightroom presets yeah is that something you're maybe curious in or just yeah it's a, i mean i was in lightroom this morning like i uh i love light i feel like lightroom is kind of half the fun of it and half the creation process as you mm -hmm. know like you take a picture and you can really amplify it Dude, with what you so do in the post-production it's so fun you can <laughs> completely change the feel and and the the look of it in the post-production that's part of the, maybe the art yeah. as well in addition to the, taking the photo um and yeah you know it's funny <laughs> industry insider secret but over the last six months i i use like two different presets more or less I, i'll always start with one of those two uh -huh. and then if it don't look quite right i have a couple others that are kind of my my second string uh -huh. um there's nothing special to them like i think they're <laughs> they're kind of part of the the built-in options uh -huh. um but i'll never just like take it out at face value usually i'm adjusting it to the way i look oh but, yeah um but yeah. yeah man it's like there's no rocket science to it i have a look now i have thought about like as i continue to evolve like would it be healthy to experiment with other ones frankly i don't like the looks of a lot of the alternatives yeah but maybe it's getting off of lightroom and using a couple of the different software that is something i think about like i shoot on a canon and then i edit it in lightroom yeah and then i post on instagram and like that's how i've done it yeah is that the best way maybe maybe not but yeah. maybe thinking about trying in, in, working in other tool sets it could be cool but honestly i think if i was selling presets i would be selling the built-in ones yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, i need to work on that but there's not much integrity in that yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a guy i 
he's a YouTuber. Um, he's a photographer too. Ryan McKinnon, I think is his name. Pete McKinnon. Maybe? Pete McKinnon. That's yeah. it. Yeah, dude, yeah, he's a G. Um, yeah, but it gets very technical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's he's it. A good, good guy. I know that. Um, yeah, even our own presets when we made them, we always like tweak them. Whatever. Yeah, but uh, yeah, dude, just the creator space. It's it's funny hearing this the same process, the same thing we would do. We would just play around on Lightroom, post it on Instagram. Um, I know that for video though, there's been a lot of like new um, tools that came out. Like when we were still creating reels, it was InShot had just came out and it was mm -hmm. like the thing. Like we would, you want to get the trending audio, you just screen record to get the trending audio, then you upload it on InShot with your clips and you just sync it and then yep. you remove the audio. And then when you upload it, you make sure it syncs up. Yeah. It takes a while. Now I think the tool that the kids are using is CapCut. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure CapCut's the one that the guys are using. Is there a process or system that you've adopted for video for your reels? Mm -hmm. Because I'm out of the reels game now. But like, yeah. I know you're trying – are you trying to focus on reels? So not in the, the sense that maybe you're describing. I I don't – I'm not my, – my, my work isn't super focused on going like real viral. Oh. I don't spend much time thinking about that. Gotcha. Maybe I should, honestly, but maybe that's how I grow. But um, no, I'd say I do a lot of my – I'll repurpose maybe reels off of full form YouTube videos that I'm doing. So okay. I'll usually shoot 4K so that I can yeah. usually, at least lately in the summer, I would do like a six to seven minute video in Premiere, make a copy of that file, re resize it to a real size, um, and then just take those with reels. It's like really fast yeah. the way it moves. And so this, the content you're putting into that 15, 30 second, it's really just the top one percent of your footage yeah. um and usually i would just use i would use um like stock audio okay. um because i'm not really trying to play that game of going viral in reels i just don't at the up to this point haven't had the interest in that mm. not knocking it in any way that's just kind of, yeah, me. of um and then other times like this is another thing that those would be like a higher end production like those look very very professionally filmed but i do think there's some appeal in these reels in shorter form uh when they're filmed just in um on your iphone and so i've been oh, yeah. experimenting with that like as i try to show a bit more of who i am uh, on my page yeah uh these days i like this past weekend i put out a reel where i would film like one second clips of i was at the olympic headquarters and filmed this couple stuff about that and i filmed when i was working with the medalists um and then just compiling that with iphone footage even though i had my nice camera in my head i shot everything on iphone that's a and that's timing is also important so i could edit that in uh instagram in a couple minutes right uh using the in-app editor oh, you, you edit it in instagram yeah like some of these uh like vlog type things that, yeah, like yeah. the recap and so i'll use that and so i do think the tool for the job also is important. Like, yeah. what is the goal here? And you don't always need to overcomplicate it. And, gotcha. Um, so it's, I'm still experimenting though. Yeah, I heard that um, I've never edited in Instagram because like the first couple of times I did it, it was just so messy. I think they fixed it uh, so far. I still have, I just always upload it, mm. what I created on, on InShot. Yeah. But uh, I've heard that Instagram rewards you if you spend more time in an editor. Like they know that you edited Rumor it. Rumor has it. I heard that that's kind of why I do it. Yeah, yeah. I've never confirmed it. I have no idea. Dude, but maybe. Yeah. I, I saw I know I know the reel you're talking about. I watched it, it was really good. You did the voiceover. Yeah. On the that was a really good one. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think uh and I see like all the views and stuff of the people who have that like FaceTime uh, FaceTiming a friend type feel. Yeah. Like it's just more intimate. And I think uh people look for that on those vertical type videos mm -hmm. yeah so it seems like and correct me if i'm wrong like for video like videography you're focusing more on like long form youtube right? yeah yeah and then like photography this you're using instagram for that That's like yeah exactly okay. okay yeah most of my photos but uh you know with a bit of overlap but yeah, yeah. um primarily photos going on on the instagram and well, then cool yeah uh, yeah no dude it's it's just such an interesting space man photo and video is the it's so much fun. And I honestly, you know, I'm going to confess here. Um, at first, when um, we were doing the photography and everything, I thought photography was like the most vain thing in the world. I was mm. like, we're pausing all these moments. Like, you're not living yeah. in the moment. And then I realized how ironic it is because the people who are creating content are actually living more life than the screenheads are just consuming it. Right? Yeah. And 
the medium in and of itself. Like I would not have remembered those moments if I didn't have a picture of it or video yeah. of it. Like it actually amplifies the experience, you, yeah, which man, is cool. You touched on something very that I think about a lot. Yeah, uh, and that's spot on. I, I think because yeah, life should be experienced. It, you never want to like be doing things for the sake of the content, right? Yeah, um, and letting that guide you. I think, and that's something I like. If I'm filming with somebody or. You never want that to be the leading, yeah. the leading thing. But I think it can be a nice um, way to memorialize it. Yeah. It's a, it is a way of, of cementing that memory for you, and you always have it to look back on. Yeah. Um, and I like to think that in in creating something, maybe gives you a little bit more than if you were simply going there as just a tourist looking at it, experiencing, mm -hmm. and then getting out. Like um, you're also flexing that creative, artistic. Yeah. side of your brain and that i think that's a good thing 100 percent, dude and i really gotta put my hat off to the gen z's yeah they made the candid type pictures very normal and that's like mainstream it's like take a picture when no one's looking mm -hmm. and i think that really captures the spirit of it because you see genuine smiles like you see a group of people like having memos or something just sneak yeah. a picture like that was a real laugh you just captured right yeah and same thing with video and all that the way to do what you just said to like don't let the content creation get in the way of the actual experience yeah i always think of it as like all right my camera is like a partner in crime mm -hmm. we're here to do this thing yeah. like that's the main focus i'll just happen to capture it yeah right man we're like i've like and, and you know who i'm talking about we used to go on these hikes with certain people and their number one mm -hmm. like objective was like oh fuck we missed like golden hour like everything's ruined i was like dude we just did a hike for two hours this was fantastic i got good content of like, yeah whatever like i had my fun but like you can tell people who are just absolutely driven by the picture mm -hmm. and when it doesn't show up like the way it has in their head and the whole experience gets ruined for them and i feel like that's that's not what we're really going for as like content creators but amen uh, yeah every word you're saying 100 <laughs> percent agree yeah man and i'll just add yeah like i think a lot of my success with working with these high-end athletes and that the, they're continuing to want to work yeah is because it's I, my biggest goal is like i want it to be like I'm just hanging out with you. Um, I'll never ask you to stage something or make you repeat, like go, go for like a one liner. Like, I think the biggest asset has been that it feels like the camera's not there. Yes. And I think that is what leads to authentic content. Maybe it could look better. The shot might look better if you brought in the production crew to yeah. say, oh, let's get this and set up the lights here. You lose something with that. 100%. Um, and so, yeah. You probably uh, can still like sneak your way in that they can't notice the camera because you have like a 24 to 240. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get that thing on the other side of the room. Yeah, you can get a picture. Yeah, exactly. You get a picture <laughs> of the neighbor. You had no idea. Exactly. That's funny. So speaking of neighbor, um, I wanted to ask you this. Um, there was one year we were doing the turkey trot. Mm -hmm. And like I saw your way up there. I'm like, all right, he always places on the podium, right? Yeah. My strategy, because I, I, I run here and there, but I'm not like a – I don't have any training right okay. so my thought was like okay a 5k is just three miles i'm gonna sprint the entire thing mm. right <laughs> so, right how'd that so work i saw you and you like took off and i was like i stuck like a, somewhere near you oh. i was like okay we'll be good yeah and then we did the turn um we turned into the virginia run elementary okay you made it that far yeah it was just full gas but wow. you, you weren't even like sprinting sprinting <laughs> i don't think but you were like fast i was like all right this is my sprint and then we turned and then we were going down hidden cannon and then you just like disappeared yeah and i was like okay this, this, <laughs> well props to you man that's a good that's half the race that's pretty yeah that's uh, a lot yeah that's respect thanks dude but uh this is probably you know i'm glad to get your thoughts on this i you also did a iron man right i did a half iron man yeah. oh dude same okay which one did you do boulder oh, yeah man. <laughs> off uh off next to zero training okay actually i would obviously i didn't plan on that but the oh. injury uh what was your injury i've had a few i've dealt with achilles partial tear okay. for like four years not kind of ended my college and it comes back I oh i understood me. it was like after college it was during college it ended uh like end of senior year okay and achilles is tough man like yeah. it's just, it's the doctor said it's gonna feel it forever but sometimes it i feel it more than than usual and so that, okay. that summer that the race was i just couldn't train uh 
the way I needed to. But I still got through it. I mean, there you go. Yeah, you know, maybe someday we'll, we'll get another one in. But nice. Dude. Where are you going with it? Um, I did my half Ironman in Tempe, Arizona. Nice. Oh, good spot. And it was like I didn't train at all. Like before that point, I did the um, – because I, I lived in Denver, I did the Boulder, the first ever Boulder Thon, so like the mm -hmm. half marathon. Yeah, um, that was the first time I ever ran more than five miles in my life. It wow. was like I didn't, I didn't want to run it more than once. So I was like, I'm just gonna show up on on race day and do it. How'd that go? And then it was like canceled, but they're like, we can do it digitally. Mm -hmm. So I just did it on Strava. I just ran around. Nice. That was a lot of distance. I was like, okay, that's a lot. I'd never want to do that again. Yeah. And then uh, my buddy Mikey, he was like, hey man. Uh, we should do an Ironman. And I was like, okay. So he did Chattanooga. I did Tempe and zero training, like zero training. Wow. Like he was swimming laps and stuff in the pool. And I was like, I, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I'm literally going to show up because I would like to get your point or um, your idea on this mentality with races like this, the distance is fixed. Right. And so if I literally don't stop, like I can only end, right? So that's it's one way linear. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I was like, although there's always a possibility yeah. of not making it to the end, right? The dropout. That's I don't know. Yeah, I saw there's like these little boats like by the swim. They're like you can always just like climb up. <laughs> no, don't even look right. at it. Yeah, that's no, good. the swim was brutal, dude. Because like everyone's on each other. So had guys like literally swim oh, yeah. over me. I was yeah. like, what the? That's fuck? intense. Yeah, yeah. yeah those so, are <laughs> Or something else, but yeah. Especially if you've never experienced one. No, it's dude. Scary. I, the last time I like, well, I did a water polo my freshman year of uh, Virginia Tech, like, um, so that was fun. But before that, I had not swam competitively since like Riptide, like that. Yeah, one, that's it. And yeah, so just like swimming, I was like, okay, just full, go full gas. Like it's it's gonna end. Then the bike was like I technically like rested on the bike. I never like sprinted sprinted until like the end. Okay. And then the run was the second and only other time I did a half marathon. Wow. I just, just yeah. did it. But uh, T2, to so that transition, my Achilles, or I think it was my calf, like I just couldn't feel it. Yeah. It was fucking crazy. I never felt anything really like it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Is it a dehydration thing, maybe? Maybe, maybe. I was just destroying noons like yeah. the whole time, so I don't huh. know. They fixed it, but yeah, I don't I don't think that's a recommendable strategy. Some props to you for giving it a go. I mean, it's clearly it's doable. I think yeah. I think maybe you would enjoy it more if you trained for it. Oh yeah, no, it was brutal. I think I only did it because my friend said I could really because he finished his in like six hours thirty. Mm -hmm. I finished mine just over seven hours. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Ooh, props. What was yours? I'm curious. Um <laughs> It's been a while. Maybe it was in the five hour nice. range. Yeah. Five and a half. If I had to guess, but I don't totally remember either. Yeah, it was uh it's a fun, it's fun to do that kind of stuff. Now the same kid is you, you probably have friends like this, athletes do this. Like yeah. he was a college athlete too. They like put little seeds in your head of like things that are possible. Right. It's like, it's like you know the English channel? I'm like, don't do this. <laughs> don't don't do, do this. this. So the swim from England to France is like a 20 hour swim. Or oh my like gosh. Yeah. Why? I, I don't know, but dude, but I looked it's into fun. it. Yeah. <laughs> I looked into it. They have you wear this uh, wetsuit and then they put this like animal grease or fat in between. Yeah. And then um, they have to, you have to give your passports to some people on the boat. And then, mm. it's, pretty, wow. it's pretty gnarly. Well, so, I, I will say that like, yeah, I think it's great to have challenges and, whether I think for a race, it can motivate you to start training unless you don't. But yeah, yeah. Uh, some people, maybe that's what it takes to start being consistent with getting in your workouts. And I think that's valuable. Um, and then I think doing hard things is good. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'll just my anecdote would be that I have a friend like yours who called me up a few months ago. He said, hey, man, like, how would you feel about climbing Mont Blanc? I said, bro. We neither of us have climbed a mountain. Do you want to start with maybe a smaller one? Maybe not the tallest mountain in Europe. Oh, yeah. And, no, let's start with that. Yeah. And I would have never done like signed up for that if nobody had brought it up, but we did. We got it on the calendar. Let's go. It slowly crept closer. Uh, I was continuing to run, but I don't think they they did maybe one practice hike. Um, and yeah, the day came, and uh, I ended up climbing to the top of Mont Blanc and it was one of the hardest things I had done simply because it was like 
three days of 4 a.m. wake ups, hiking all day, holding 50 pounds on your back. Yeah. Nothing about it was easy. It's probably one of the top three experiences of my life because I did something so hard yeah. and had to dig within myself to, to accomplish that. Yeah. Um, and there's no, no, no feeling like that. As I'm going down, I'm already thinking, what is the next one? I, I can't wait to do yeah, this again. Exactly. Um, but yet it was scary. It was draining. It was very challenging. But there's something about that, doing yeah. hard things. Absolutely. Yeah, you just touched on it. That's that's the same kind of stretch you did when you uh, reached out to uh, Sidious, right? Yeah, Sidious yeah, yeah. Like it, It's like, yeah, I know what I'm capable of. This is just outside that right. comfort zone. Like, exactly. And that's what makes you grow by stretching like that. So, Amen. Dude, these physical feats, like, they just won't stop. Just pushing yourself physically makes it so much easier to push yourself mentally. Like later oh, on. Well, that's that's huge. I, I despite all the travel, despite being behind the camera, I always talk prioritize physical activity because yeah. I think that and sleep allow everything else oh, and yeah. enable and but it, not the other way around. You can't you can't perform high in your other hobbies and pursuits um, if your health isn't addressed oh, yeah. and uh, a healthy body is a is a healthy mind and yeah um so that's as this is a side note but it's always making sure you're taking care of your body 100 that's your vessel well uh dude i really appreciate you talking about business with me you're you're uh you're gonna take off i know it it's Thank already you, such a <laughs> sick brand you have this Thank photo you. yeah it just rolls off the tongue Thank um you. i actually if you look under that uh cushion there i got oh, it for you what oh have you heard of Alex Ramosi? Of course I have. Yeah, yeah. And you got a book for me. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, like, when you put together offers, whatever that comes to your mind, um, this wow. helps you. Alliteration. So I was going to give it to him, but he never took it. So. <laughs> yeah. Dude, what an honor. Thank you. I love this guy. and I'm, I've been so curious about kind of what he's all about. So I'm, I'm yeah. going to love this. No, he's the man. He has a story very similar to ours, actually. Okay. That he, is. He, uh, oh, was the gym. He founded the gym. Yeah, yeah. But before that, he uh, he went to college. He went to, uh, what's that school? Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. um, summa cum laude, graduated all honors, whatever. And then he started working as a management consultant, I think, in D.C., actually. All right. He was raised in Baltimore, but I think it was just in D.C. And I think, I don't, I don't think he ever said it, but I think it's one of the big four. And he was working, and he was like, yeah, I'm going to do something else. I, like you, I didn't quit until, like, I... And, and I'm not telling you to quit. I know you said you're gonna, you might entertain a sabbatical, but like, yeah, uh, he quit. And so when he quit, he did the gym thing, whatever. But he came from the same background as us, like a consultant. So he's got a really like nice um, background story in there. Yeah, he's met Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's all kinds of pictures in here. I love um, it. Build out your offers. It's super, super cool. And I think that's a big. We didn't get into it, but knowing your value and knowing how to sell yourself, I mean, that's a yeah. huge part of it. And yeah, it's, it's not it's something that takes practice and you can't maybe always just wing it. It is something that takes yeah. some thought and maybe dreaming big and yeah. a lot lot to that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to reading this on the plane ride to Oregon. Yeah, man. Uh, have a good flight. Um, I'm going to be in Madrid. I'm flying on Friday. So Travel. I'm glad we got to get this done when we could. Yeah, so. it's, it's sick. It's always nice to see yeah, you, man. Good to see you, brother. Well, uh, let's have to go way back to elementary school. Go Bulls. Go Rams, go dogs, go Hokies. No, I'm Go who's it? Take it easy. Woo. Thanks, Johnny. Good show, dude. Sweet, bro. Good show.